Good morning and welcome to another couple of replays from our website and that is the Student Starcraft AI Tournament. Of course, uh, the 2015 tournament is coming up. In the meanwhile we've got the AIDE tournament from uh, Canada coming up. Uh, um, well, we'll talk about that later. For now, uh, we have... okay, well let's do the fun stuff first. Uh, for those of you who do not know, these are all bots playing StarCraft Brute War, and it's a bit of an older game, but there is a brilliant API for it which allows for artificial intelligence scripts to interact with the game. And here we've got a player called Patanki and Kirill, and those are both uh, students of, uh, well, the boss of our tournament, It's um, and I think I'm going to blow this, but uh, it's called Michael Sertiki, and he is a uh, Czech um, teacher at the university, um, a Czech Technical University, I think it's called, and he has been doing a tutorial on Brute War AI, and these are two of the bots after, I think, three days of the tutorial, so it was a bit of a side project, they got three days with his, uh, with Michael, and Michael is a really great guy, he is, he's been running this tournament, well, virtually, I th no, well, not single-handedly, but he's been 90% of the effort and the time and the inspiration for it. And he's just a, a really great guy, hasn't got much time to program himself, but um, as you can see, he's still getting the word out and still organizing this brilliant tournament, so... Let's see what these two bots have up their sleeves. I'm going to uh, pass it on to two speed and not any faster because I want to see what these bots are up to. And again, we've got a Kirill as the orange Terran and Patanki as the brown Terran. Both open uh, quite similarly. And oh, golly, we've got an um, we've got an APM listing in the top right. That's new. Uh, that's a new plugin I nicked from the MCA64 launcher. And well, I had wanted to um, nick the overlay launcher so you could see what uh, which players are playing and what kind of buildings and stuff they had, but uh, the launchers weren't that compatible. I'm using the uh, the Chaos launcher, but that is something on the side. And it looks like 12 supply, 11 supply. They're almost similar. And a bit of mineral stacked up. Same here. Uh, okay, another barracks coming. And okay, we see the first divergence in build orders because uh, Patanki is going two racks depot and Kirill is going two depots and a barracks and is now sending his unit out. So that is still quite similar. And now another couple of racks for Kirill and Patanki is going to brave it. Perhaps he's going for an expansion note for a bunker. And no, that's Marine, so uh, the first difference is already. With uh, Patanki going a bit more defensive, with the. Oh, two bunkers, that's really nice, that's hard to break. Okay, three bunkers, oh well. And Kirill going for an academy. Oh, that's interesting because quite a bit of gas stacked up already. And no academy here because uh, he's supply blocked, so <laughs> a slight difference in the coding. And after that, the marine production continues, and an academy as well. And okay, another academy. So that's a little bit of a uh, small mistake, but if you consider these guys have been coding for only three days now, that's really brilliant. Uh, APMs are okay. You see some bots doing up to uh, well, I have seen up to almost 100,000 APM. Uh, 90, 90 something thousand it was. So this is really, um, really very civil. 300 APM. That's okay. Nice building placement. Nothing gets locked in as of yet. Three barracks academy, and the army goes underway. And now it's all down to micro because um, Patanki is stuffing all his units into okay range and stim at the same time. What have we here? Nothing here. Okay, so range and stim. This will be a bluff bath. But we've got medics, and medics are really good. That said, first bunker is under attack. No SCPs repairing it. That's, um, well, I'd say that definitely is beyond three days' um, capabilities. And now the medics are catching fire, bad prioritizing, but with two bunkers firing at the, the strange marines. And now some. Yeah, no, well. 
Okay, well, we need another bunker. Okay. And now the medics of Patanki are getting attacked. Supply wise, Patanki at 26 and Kirill at 36. So that is a slight advantage more. We've got four barracks, one, two, three, three here. But um, Patanki has the uh, range and the stim upgrade. A pity that the stim upgrade is not really doing much for marines and bunkers, and what this medic is doing, I can only guess. But Okay, one more barracks. That's very good. So, aside from Patanki having two academies and <laughs> Kiro having only one, they're about equal. Again, the attack is on, and this is quite good micro. Um, nice line, they're not in single file, and that is a bloodbath. But this bunker might eventually go down, and then there is a huge problem because there are so many, and a nice backup bunker in the back. That is. Well, that's where it should be, a back and bunker in the back. Now with the Roam Medics and the tanky is holding on very well. Now in extra bunkers. And that's not going well. This is a very nice concave. Okay. Well. Uh, SUV saturation pretty low. Only one on gas. Uh, cause, yeah, you could well say something for that. Because you only need medics that are not very... Uh, the same goes for here. Okay, going to speed it up a little bit because uh, this is such a nice concave, you are going to need a hell of a lot of well upgraded marines to uh, break through here. And with the rallies of the tanky, it's not really going to work because three bunkers firing at the same time, that is quite a lot. More barracks. I don't know where that's based on. Marines. <laughs> oh, oh, oh dear, oh dear. Kirill, Kirill moving forward. It's like World War One. It is. It is not really good. But it's just really good. I mean, the bots are mining and they're attacking and they're building buildings at the right places, and that can be so difficult. If you see how much time players or coders normally put into these bots, it is astounding to see that after only three days, uh, with little expert guiding, of course. But these bots are so very good. Oh, and I fear that might be. Uh, I might have been a command center, but it isn't. Medics were able just a little bit out there. Uh, supply wise, 37, they're about equal. And uh, this is the optimal placement of three bunkers. So if you are ever playing a one base uh, bioterror on this map, this is the optimal setup for bunkers if they're ever playing bio. Now it seems to be a steady treacle, uh, as you can see on the minimap for Kirill. And nothing much is happening. So when will these players mine out? More barracks, so this is uh, have very, very many barracks, and they can't be uh, producing all of them. So, ooh, where did all the SUVs go? Missed that. Oh, there they go. Okay. Where are they mining? Are they mining here? What? Oh. Damn it, honest that. Okay, so um, Kiro was the first to mine out after sacrificing so many marines on these three bunkers, and Patanki going for the kill. And again, uh, both bots are able to find the enemy and wipe them out. So that is uh, that's not an easy thing to do after three days. Okay, uh, seeing as these marines are a moving correctly. Uh, will we see? No, we won't see any long distance line because this base will be dead before it. I'm uh, going to give the game to uh, Pataki because we've got another one and I'd like to show you more because uh, even though we had some, well, I think it's called Fresh Blood. Oh, and we've got another player. It's called, he's called Bobek versus uh, Kirill and Kirill did the nice um, marine medic into grouping into a move and let's see what Bobek is up to. Again these are players who have been uh, following a uh, tutorial by uh, Michael Sertiki for three days and these are first year students of the Czech Technical University or the Prague Technical University or the Czech Technical University in Prague, I don't know. Okay let me slow it down because we've got some scouting going on. Three barracks, one depot and two depots, one barracks this might be a nice little push because one, two, three, four. Could we count them? 
One, two, three, slow down. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 10, 11, and we've got 18 supply, 12, we need 6 marines. Okay, 5 marines, 13 SCVs here, and 5 marines, 17 supply, 12 here. Okay, so that is rather low econ because the saturation is not normal. Only one at gas, and the same here, so I think they've had a, a communal base to start from. These difference. Okay, and Bobek again going for the famous two uh, two academy build with range upgrading and no stim. So as you recall, uh, Patanki did the stim and range simultaneously. Now Bobek only does range and will it? No, he won't start on. Okay, there goes. Okay, that's a very safe scouting tactic. Just uh, stay all together and set a rally point. <laughs> that is, these are mirror images. Okay, found nothing there. Converge now on the third, and Bobek will have the high ground here. While oh, this will be interesting. Now it's all down to micro, and I don't think these bots will have very much micro. But as you can see, uh, the purple Terran Bobek is positioned slightly better. Oh, the rallies of uh, Kiro are coming in, and will the, uh, I think, when the energy of these purple medics runs out, there are some newer medics here and more marines coming, so that is very well done. Meanwhile, the Terran, uh, purple Terran is stacking up some uh, attacking units here, and we've got a nice one base, and as we can see, it's now 36 versus about 50. Oh, that's a shame. These two marines could have made all the difference, but they're not the main army, so no dice. Now Bobek is uh, attacking again, and if you think, well, I've seen uh, bots play much better. In fact, the brute war, uh, the Blizzard brute war AIs played much better. These guys have been at us for only three days, and <laughs> if you have got any inkling about the difficulty of coding a brute war bot. That is very, very, very impressive. Medics staying with the party, and these marines even moving back and forth. But the main army needs to come back because otherwise it's going to be a bloodbath. Supplies are about equal with the defender's advantage. And when this medic is getting. No, that's not good. Now the main army is moving in, and these, what are they, seven marines are in for a hell of a. Nasty surprise if those uh, marines hit them from the rear. Okay, going to speed it up because even though it is damn impressive that they've got uh, gotten so far in only three days, there go the marines. 50 supply versus 45, and now I think it will be a snowball in favor of uh, Kirill. And that is quite a dandy movement because nothing is bugging out. Everything is working. Well, the functionality is not fully developed yet, but everything is working. They are building marines, they are building medics, they're keeping them close together, and they are able to fight. And that is by no means a small feat. Uh, supply is still in favor of Kirill, and this is going to snowball out of control, because now the rallies are moving in, and although they're... Oh, and the high ground might just save, uh, save Bobek here, but I don't know. How is the mineral situation? Well, it's about equal, low... Uh, in the low saturation, and as you can see, Kirill is moving in here. This one marine, no, the medics are not always, always there. Targeting marines, targeting medics, two kills already, now none left. And medic marine can be such a um, great style to play if you add a couple of bases, it's really dangerous. As you will know, TSC move, or as you might know, TSC move, um, I think, number two Terran at the moment. Uh, used to play mass bio, and if you can stack 25k APM behind a <laughs> multi base bio play, that is just outrageous. You can do so much, so much micro, so much surrounding, so much harass, that is it's crazy. And for only three days, if you've come so far uh, without any major bugs, that is um, that is really well done. So I can only hope that these um, neophytes will continue to code their bots and will continue to improve and also join uh, the student StarCraft AI tournament. But they are still students so 
that is the time of your life. So GG, Kirill, uh, of the three players we've seen, well, he's won, no, he's won one, but it's the more offensive one, so I think it's the, the more attacking one, that's not really the right word in this context, but really well done. Okay, welcome guys, and I hope to see more from you soon. Now, what happened more? Have we advanced? No, we have not really advanced. We have gone back in time with the other bots of the Student Starcraft AI Tournament live server, which is playing games 24-7. If you uh, go to our website, you can watch them all day long playing games. Now, um, as I said, we haven't gone forward a bit. We've gone back, and by back, I mean we have brought back uh, Marion Divecker, also known as Killerbot, a couple of years ago, a very dominant Zerg. Uh, the bot we had on the student Starcraft AI tournament server degraded or uh, contained some bugs, perhaps a wrong update, or uh, it, it updated itself after the game so it became unplayable. I don't know, it crashed an awful lot about two thirds of the game, and we brought one back, uh, a stable version. So that is, um, that is very nice. It's no longer under under active development, but it's still one hell of a bot, and its opponent is uh, Gaoyuan Shen uh, from California, and he has been working on this bot in the spring a bit, but has not really done all that much since. Now we've got a bit of zealot pressure, and this sunken is just out of range, so this zealot can do a lot of damage, and this zealot even might be getting some drone kills. Yep, there it goes. Oh, and no kills because it was incredibly li really low HP. Gaiyun Shen, uh, description on the website says it's now a Reaver drop bot. He has tried to imitate a Xim carrier bot. Has done some multi base uh, harass plays, but now claims to be a uh, Reaver. But I can't see a lot of wounds coming with range, which might be a good. A uh, good thing versus Zerg. Now what we see we here? We see a Hydra Den. Very low drone count. I think that is well. Must be intentional. And a lair coming. What can you do? Uh, might be a lurker play. But a low, very, very small standing army. And Gaon Shen is on the march with a couple of zealots without the weapons upgrade and the goon. Lost some extra range. Only one sunken. Couple of couple of zerglings coming to help out. And I think he might just hold it. But the sunken goes down, and now he's taking drone damage. That is not good. And here comes the lair, but what have you uh, from a lair if your your main army is dead and these goons are doing a job on everything still standing? Now, going on Shen just going for waves of zealots and goons, making probes, perhaps going to expand soon. I don't know. And meanwhile, the infrastructure of uh, of Killerbot, Marion Diverka, is the program at the bot is called Killerbot. But it's it's back on top because these things are so well micro they take on the uh, the piecemeal rallies of Protoss and that's very very impressive. It's just been broken to bring it back. New creep co colony coming and will we now see some some hybrids because things are all nice and dandy. Yep, that's a sunken and another sunken. So two more sunkens. That is really good. Meanwhile, this seems to be just a three base gateway pump. You could expand how many APM? About 600. Kilobot now at, oh, about equal APM. That's really impressive. With all these zerglings. And where's the main army? Okay, we've now got two sunkens and the hydras. If you're going to play Hydra Ling versus uh, Zealots, one thing to remember is that if you've got a critical mass of hydras, the Zealots almost can't touch them because they've got no range. And goons versus Zerglings, uh, yeah, well, you can see how that goes. Meanwhile, army advantage spiraling out of control for Killerbot. More Hydras coming, and all these rallies. I thought Shen was doing a bit better, but it's not really. One more expansion coming. No more upgrades, overlord speed, and more Hydras. Okay, so these Hydras now moving up the ramp, about to depower this. Well, I think yeah, it's still powered, but if this piling goes down, it will be out. And as you can see, the Zella only got two hits in on this Hydra, and that's just profit. Fast Overlord can also scout in case there is any DTs. And now with three bases, uh, this is not going good for Gannon Shep. Okay, so we're going to give the game to Killerbot. 
uh, well done welcome back and I've also selected a replay from a little more difficult match um, no not that one that must be later I had okay well let's do a bit of a build up because that's nice again we've got Killerbot by uh, Marianne Di Vecca and uh, Marian is a uh, well, a man by now I think was a student at the Czech University in Prague and one of the first um, World War AI coders who made a big name for himself and as an opponent we've got Søren Klett with Whopper and Søren Klett has been um, well at first he was a very good mech Terran then he was a very mediocre Protoss and now he's back to Terran and recently switched to um, switched to bio, so that will be very interesting to see how that goes, uh, because uh, Søren Klett is a very, um, well, I might say, good programmer. He can get stuff done, uh, but of course, if you start a new concept or a new bot, that will take some time before it's starting to fly. Now again, we've got a hatchery, sunken coming, a lot of links. Links, links, links. Sunken is now better place because nothing can run by, and of course, uh, Marines are not like Zealots, they've got a bit of a, a longer range, so they are not as prone to just walk by there. They like to attack anything in their field of fire. Stim coming. More barracks, and now a bit of a lull in production because it's supply block. Now, two depots coming, a lot of minerals stacking up, and gas too, that's not good. And there goes the medic production. Okay, very well. Meanwhile, Zerg has been left alone for too long, and now we've got a, a nice group of oh lurkers. That's good. But we've got a concept, and it's um, it's accumulating energy, so that's very good. One link about the scout, and if we go to the the first person view for Marion Diveka, hasn't scouted the enemy yet, so I don't know if it's guessing that the enemy is here. Well, it's not there, but it could be here. Um, will it attack? Will it attack? I don't know. And to show you what kind of an, uh, a frightening thing that is, that is what you see as a Terran. You only see these lurkers and they kill everything. Now where is the scan? Where's the scan? There's the scan, but with a repair, these lurkers are so up close that they kill the repairing SUVs and there goes the entire force of, of Whopper and Whopper now in a horrible position because he's got um, lurkers and one link, a couple of links, and these are a lot of lurkers. So these SCVR you, you can try and go and fight them, but it's not really viable. And what is uh, multi kill? Okay, well that must be some of the uh, must be, a be the APM plugin I installed. If you look at uh, the Zerg's base. Nice bit of depots, overlords, and a third base up and running, producing some some drones, but it's not really necessary because there are already about, I'd say, 20-ish lurkers in the enemy, no, about 15, 10, whatever. Enough lurkers in the enemy base, okay, so GG. And uh, pardon me the long build-up because... Uh, but I'd like to say my defense that I am a Zerg lover, and I, my, by that I mean I don't mean some kind of furry who loves Zergs, but I just love a good ZVT, and especially if the Zerg wins. So now we've got Ice Lab, and Ice Lab was the top dog for the last couple of years, uh, especially until uh, TSU Mu came along, and now there are some other bots who can deal with it as well. And as the Zerg, we've got Killerbot by Marion Defecker. And this is going to be a bit of a struggle because uh, they are about from the same era. That means that they both received their last update about um, 2013. And that means that they are both... Um, well, how do you say that? They are both... They have, they have known each other in the times that their coders were still working on them. So they are a bit... Um, evenly matched. If you've got a game of TSU or uh, Garnbot vs Icebot, these bots are two years newer and even though they are not yet so refined as Icebot, they, are, uh, they have some concepts of victory that these two guys 
uh, these older guys have had no chance of seeing or working. So now we've got the same lurker build it seems, a drone coming out for the third, but Icebot has got two turrets and tanks and if you are playing only bio of one base or if you're going mech on two base that is quite a lot quite a big difference now this SUV thing whoa no not going in there and here comes okay well that was the push already these lurkers coming back and that is something um, you might appreciate as well because Killerbot recognized what you can't push through here suffered quite a bit of losses at the hands of these siege tanks and perhaps some of the and ah, that is just a very good position because these tanks uh, they take some damage and a lot of lurkers but two bunkers and a handful of tanks one more shot and that's the game now Killerbot is soon to be at 3 base but very low saturation Icebot has been more diligent with the SUV production and starting his own third as well the SUV of course having scouted it, let's see could he have seen it uh, no, not yet. So, but he has cowed at the creep, so probably knows that something's going on there. And that's odd because I can distinctly remember these um, sunken. Oh, and that's nice. Nice to see that because Icebot is scanning the enemy for tech buildings for any kind of army it needs to counter. And that's so very well done and nice that you could see it now. Well, Siege Tanks, these SUVs aren't repairing, I don't know why not, but uh, hey, that's not the reason why, let's just admire the game. And now we've got a nice 3 vs 3 base at our hands, 80 supply for Killerbot and Icebot is at 120, that shouldn't be all that bad, but if you let it take your mineral for your third base, um, a little bit more scouting awareness would be nice, but of course... Uh, this is a bit of an older bot and they were just not as aggressive as the newer ones. Now Icebot coming down the lane and something says, tells me that you need um, Plague and a lot of Lings and Lurkers and Ultras. But now you've got a mech push at your door, supported by 3 base eco and that is just horrible. At least if you're the Zerg, because you might kill the first wave but the, this mass of siege tanks you just what do you do against it? Icebot scans and sieges down the enemy but not enough scans and that is a pity uh, a lot of kills but no energy here nothing there or nothing not enough and more here be but perhaps that's a tactical reserve and now on the offensive once more nice bit of drone production here fourth base coming up I think it's too late because the supplies are double Oh, and six drones have been destroyed. I don't know if that is. Um... Oh, there's been a drop. There's been a drop at the back of the base, but it has been cleaned up by these Zerglings. So these bots are really both very reactive. And now, even two tanks on the high ground. That must have been. A... Oh, yeah, there it is. That hasn't been a drop. So you can see how Icebot uh, used to rule during its uh, its primacy around 2013. It was just is very big lumbering mech terror with some very clever strategies drops in the main tank drops at the high ground and science vessels too so that is that is really impressive if you look at the supplies icebot is going for the kill and i think nothing can stop okay well this got cleaned up but icebot taking the map now on one, two, three, four base, two more coming. Oh, and you need to see this. Uh, no, it's just counting. Icebot mines up expansions like this, so if another bot wants to place a command center hatchery or nexus here, it can't, and it isn't smart enough to scout or build a little bit further. Uh, the expansion won't get made, so that is a very um, big tactical advantage. Now, these tanks sieging and unsieging every time some Zerglings come along, and if Zerglings run into them, they um, they do get damage from friendly fire. Now, more drones have been killed. <laughs> Another, I don't know what this third drop has done. But by now, Killerbot, very low on drones. Another nice drop here, three kills, four, seven, eight, a lot of kills, a couple of links with that as well, but as you can see, Icebot not taking any chance and just rolling on, keeping rolling. This base is about to go down because.
because there is no more money. A lot of gas stack, but Ice Bolt is now maxed, stacking money and doing upgrades. So that is how these old school players run. But we've brought back Killerbot in a working fashion, and that is something to um, admire because it's still very, very good. And then what I wanted to show was another Protoss which we brought back from the death, sort of. Uh, it's called Andrew Smith. The mod's name is uh, Skynet. And that's a name some of you might recognize. Skynet, the uh, antagonist from, uh, oh, I think it's the Terminator. I don't know. Must be Terminator. I don't like the series, but uh, I think it's Terminator. And uh, Florian Richou is a French programmer, and the bot is called Aya. So we've got Aya in the green Protoss homeworld. Um, it's an acronym that stands for AI using randomness. That is quite clever for such an acronym. And Skynet had a bit of the same problems as Killerbot, either the, uh, the files. So these, some of these bots have got learning functionality, and I'm slowing down a bit because um, I need to explain it a bit before the action takes off. Uh, they've got learning functionality, which means that they will store certain files with information in them about the enemy or what they did themselves or what worked and what didn't. And now it seems like, uh, oh golly, 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 these, um, these Dark Templars had better hurry because we've now got two zealots and they are only being fed by probes and there are so many probes dying, it's really out of this world. <laughs> and Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And finally, these D, this one DT, I think the probe got the kill, but the DT's cleared up. And now Aya is at 12 supply, it can't even build more DT's because its, it's eco is so wrecked. But now, the question is, is there scouting? And that was a very nice early push. We've got Goon Range coming, but we've got no scouting. And I think they recognize something is going wrong but it's not really able to do something about it because it's got no scan. In the real world I think you'd throw down a forge perhaps in a hidden location and meanwhile the army is getting cleaned up and more DTs yeah more DTs oh, slow down a bit more DTs are coming and now the DTs are in the probe line so this is not going well very close hold by Aya but and I are now going back into the gateway production. Probe count still a bit shaken, but uh, has been on the increase. Uh, this probe won't get out. No, you won't. And now we've got DTs in the base. No more money for Skynet. So Skynet leads to dust. Very clever DT play by Aya. Good. We, we've got more because... Uh, where is it? That was that. Uh... Okay, I need to pick my games a little bit because I've got them stacked up versus some very good opponents. Oh well, let's see what it does. Okay, so again we need a game of Skynet. And Skynet is... oh well, let's take this one. As the Purple Terran, we've got TS Himu Terran. And TS Himu Terran is the number... Well, I think it's the number... How can you quantify that? I think it's the best Terran, but it has some, some flaws versus certain opponents. It will still die to a couple of four pool builds or something which it doesn't recognize very well, but basically it can defeat any good player out there except TSC Zerg. And as the blue Protoss, we have got Skynet coded by Andrew Smith, and Andrew Smith is a bit of an enigma at this point because all of a sudden, a couple of years ago, he dropped out of the scene, hasn't been heard from since and nobody has been able to find him, talk to him, email him, or whatever. So that is a really big loss to the AI community, because this is still, after all these years, I think the best Protoss bot. And if you are uh, playing in an active field like the, um, the Mood for AI community, where we get about, I'd say, uh, between 10 and 20 new bots each year, if you, after two years, are still the top Protoss, you're doing something very, very well. now. And uh, Goon Pressure gets stuffed by um, a couple of tanks and a bunker. Now with the turret. And we've got more gates coming. So what will we see? 
what will we see, what we will see, an expansion, and there's something very rare as well, because uh, Aya and Thomas Siri do expand too, but I think they are not as refined, and well, there are some other things about Skynet that you will find out probably that are very, very impressive and very unique. Now, a couple of vultures being chased, and as you can see, Skynet is just consolidating, scouting around a bit, not engaging the enemy because it's a very strong Terran. TC Moon, meanwhile, is macroing up, going for Starport, and is now, I think, 55, 56, down in supply, and I don't really know why that is. It's attacking too hard, perhaps. I don't, I don't know. A lot of infrastructure, not enough units. I don't know. Perhaps a bit of a late expansion, no third yet. And now we've got a gateway units versus minefield, and yep, you can see how that goes. A lot of zealots get absorbed by the mines, a couple of goons too, and what's left gets mown down by these siege tanks, which have not yet got any weapons. And we've got a physics labs, hello! Okay, TSU going to do a bit of a, a cheeky strategy, I fear. Well, I hope, that's very interesting. Now, more gates, gates, and a citadel with leg speed. And leg speed is very instrumental against siege tanks and mines because you can reach the enemies uh, faster, perhaps drag a mine into a couple of marines or a tank, and generally take less uh, tank fire while you are running towards them. Now, these vultures with their mines are very good, but as you. Oh, I should slow that down. I should slow that down. These haven't got any mines left. These, these vultures are out microing. Uh, the zealots, but the zealots are also uh, avoiding hitting on those mines in large groups. So if they spot a mine, one zealot will run ahead and the other ones will uh, follow a little distance. So that's very well done. Meanwhile, Tiasimu controlling the map. Uh, yeah, there we go. We've got battle cruisers. I don't know if two base battle cruiser is such a good build, but hey, what do you know? Again, Tiasimu Terran is one of those bots who um, likes to store information. And in this case, that might work against it, because um, the player called Skynet is no longer the uh, bot which only used to do a lot of zealots and uh, the occasional dragoon, but is now a full-fledged, well-upgraded, well-expanding bot. And that is a problem, because if you are expecting game versus some, some defective bot, and you are now faced with the real thing, the smells just didn't work. That is astounding. Taking out minimum one zealot. Piece. That is very, very good. Now with battle cruiser, more battle cruisers coming. That is crazy. That is very crazy. And the vultures, meanwhile, are just um, roving around and trying to keep this army down. But now at 130, TSM only at 90. So that will be a bit of a problem. A couple of cannons, um, I think, to prevent drops. Again, Skynet is one of the um, generationals with um, of the generational Icebot and Killerbot. So you'd get a drop of a couple of vultures or a couple of goliaths and two cannons can deal with that, no problem. And we've got Storm! Okay, this is going to be brilliant. I haven't seen this game beforehand. Uh, I knew that Icebot, um, I, Icebot Skynet, our Protoss player, could do um, could do Templar tech. Ooh, and we've got we've got the Yamato coming, but against these many uh, this many uh, dragoons, that's not going to work. And TSM is going to be in a bit of a bind because now it's two base with um, oh, okay saturation, I guess. But it's got no army, and all these um, these gateway units are at the door, taking down SUVs, taking down the natural, and a one base battle cruiser play is just not very viable. Fourteen. CV's been killed, and there we've got the High Templars. As you can see, only three base economy, forthcoming, and that's just uh, with the nicely timed rogue transfer. Very good. Main base being torn down, and this one battle cruiser and one siege tank. Oh, yeah, what can you do? Oh, and that was a storm on the SCV and on the. Oh, that was a bit of a misclick, but hey, well, you know, that we've got more energy and an Archon, so that is very, very impressive because that storm is so very good. And then morph an Archon and use it as a combat unit, that's very pro. Okay. Um, calling to calling the GG now, four base versus uh, zero supply. If that battle cruiser dies, and that was the zero supply. Taking down TSC Mutaran, that is no mean feat. 
And I think I had another game versus the Asimu Terran. Which one was it? Mm, yeah, was it the first one? Which map, map was it? I don't know. Let's take the first one. Is it the same? No. Okay. So again, we've got TSMU, the Terran, versus uh, Andrew Smith's Skynet. Bit of a smaller map. And last game we had a bit of um, a two-base battle cruiser play, which is not the strongest by all means. Uh, let's see what the TSMU Terran opts for in this um, this smaller setting. Racks first. Here, yeah, nothing out of the ordinary. Quick ish core goon, another gateway, bit of scouting going on, nothing important. And let's keep an eye, okay, well, moving out, oh, slowing it down just a little bit. Now we've got three goons out, the Theosimu has now spotted it, and what is it going to do? Vultures and spider mines. So these vultures and spider mines are going to have the work cut out for them because uh, this will soon be three. Look at the time, these goons waiting, and now it's done, and now they're moving into the base. So that is some very good timing. And if you're defending with vultures, that is going to be a hard, hard lot. Now, five goons, SCVs dying, that was mines, and you're going to need a lot of good mine hits to be able to fend that off. Before, Skynet used to do a lot of, uh, I'd say, well, zealot heavy play, and as you can see, Mines are not really the big threat to AI protesters as, as they are to human protesters because um, that, in these games there is no lag, like really zero. They uh, play against each other on the same machine on the same server, so the lag might be in the range of, uh, if I dare to venture to guess, two milliseconds, something like that. Now these vultures are trying to hold them off, hold them off. Ah. Ah, it's not working, it's not working. Only vultures, you need a couple of tanks, you need good line hits, and if you're using vultures and SMEs at the same time, it's not going to work. And that's a bit of a pity, because um, I'd like to show you more of what Skynet can do in a late game setting. We had a glimpse of that already with uh, the Skynet vs. TSU game for this, and this is over. This can only be over because now the SUVs are all dying and GG. So that is very good because if you can beat TSU uh, Terran with a bot which was last updated in 2013, that is very, very impressive. Okay, we see that one. Uh, we see that one. Okay, so I guess that was it. Uh, at the end of October, I think the 30th, the um, submission deadline for the AI. Can we show that? No, we are not going to show that. Uh, what's this? Well, it's the same game. Um, I need a, a final word. But um, the AWIDE tournament is uh, starting. We've got a couple of new entrants and a lot of old entrants as well. So uh, we'll be for, uh, looking forward to the replays from that tournament and, of course, to see what um, has been updated. Not all of these bots are on our server as well because uh, there are discrete tournaments. We've just had the CIG. Uh, now the AWIDE and the Student Starcraft AI tournament will be commencing for the 2015 finals, I think, in the Christmas holidays. So thank you for watching, have a nice day, and goodbye.